Yes, yes, and yes. Could there be aiming too high or too low? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And again, man, what, what the engine's used for, its engine speed and the fuel being used is going to dictate what angle that fork comes in at, how high the short side is, how much rotation there is, how much cant in the short side, all that. Um, so, but I can give you some generalities. A good angle for the intake runner is as little as you can get away with. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't want to be turning, you know, 180 degrees. You'd like to aim it straight down, but we can't do that. We have to have manifolding and valve train and everything else. So, if you aim if you aim the port down too much and you kill all the short side radius, that's a horrible scenario. It's not as detrimental as having it way too high and too abrupt because that'll just shut the motor off. The engine can't turn, it can't rev up, it can't turn RPM at all. As a matter of fact, there are heads out there like spread port big block Chevy cylinder heads that they all have the same valve size, two four fifty valve, and there's 50, 60 horsepower between them, but they all have about the same combustion chamber, same valve size, about the same cross-sectional area in the, in the ports, but why is there so much power difference, and especially RPM difference? And, and that's the difference between the power, really, is its ability to attain a higher engine speed. Like the Raptor heads will move 540, and there are heads out there who shall go nameless that will move the same amount of air, the only, and with the same valve size, it makes 60 horsepower less. Why do they do that? Well, the short side is too abrupt. So it's, it's stood up. So as you stand the short side up, that's torque. As you lay it back, that's top end power and engine speed. So somewhere in between there, there's going to be a point where that system tunes up for that individual combination. So too low is too bad, too high is too bad. So what they do is, because the short side is so tall and abrupt, they make the bowls huge, monstrous bowls. Because you have to slow the air down more to get it around that abrupt corner. So on the flow bench, it flows the same, but dynamically on the running engine, it's a freaking disaster. So what happens is, is the, the peak attains, once that airspeed reaches the Mach limit, that's the choke point. So... As it's abrupt, it doesn't care, it doesn't care how big the bowl is. On the flow bench at 1 PSI, that's fine. But on the running engine at 150 inches of depression, it's going to go choke instantly, and you're not going to be able to get any engine speed. So what happens is those heads make the same torque at mid-range, but 50, 60 less horsepower and no over-rev whatsoever. And have we talked about over-rev? Just we did. We were talking about a little it. bit before we did. Yeah. yeah. What by over rev? I mean, how far can you carry peak power past peak power? How much? How much power can you hang on to? Because let's say the engine's making a thousand horsepower at, at ten thousand RPM. Well, eleven thousand. I still want a thousand horsepower. I still want the same power. You're not going to get it. I mean, it's going to drop. But the whole idea is to hang on to that for as long as possible. Why do we do that? Well, let's say take a converter car, for instance, um, that little 363 comp and C altered on the dyno. It made peak torque at 8,800 and peak horsepower at 10.1, but it stalled the converter at 9,600 and shifted at 11.1. Well, why do we do that? Because if we can carry the power out like we did on that all the way to 11 and shift, it's not going to drop down to 85. It's going to drop down to 96, and there's 200 more horsepower there. So I mean, there again, are you you're talking about lofting the valve again? Is that, that probably yeah, and you're the, keeping it in the loft curve. Yeah. Yeah. The worst thing you can do on a valve train, two worst things you can do for a valve train, rev limiter and shift. Because when you shift, that system Ooh. stalls. Boom. Oh, yeah. And it's got to re-accelerate, so you're shocking the – everything is shock-loading at that point. So for every shift, you're shocking the valve train. But I will say harsh limiters are the worst things on valve trains. They chew valve seats up. I'm, I'm amazed, too. I yeah. mean, we're, we're at two hours and 18 minutes, but we could talk another three hours. You know, it's amazing the information that's being exchanged here. I think yeah, when I hold seminars and I talk, I talk for eight hours. It goes by so damn fast. 
I mean, this is all I've ever done. I love it every day I go to work. So I love to talk about it. Most people don't. In this industry, I guess most people don't like to talk about it. 